Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. We are so glad to have you joining us today for Jesus the Heater. Welcome. I mean, yes. we treat this studio just like a, home, a room in our home, and we just make ourselves at home, and we just eat. <laughs> what, isn't that really what you do in your home a lot? You eat, right? Well, we're going to eat the Word, and, and uh, as we feed on it, it won't leave us like it found us. It will, it will nourish every single arena of our life and we're believing God for you to receive exactly what you need in your life. Healings, miracles, revelation, wisdom and uh, so uh, expect something today. Release your faith. Amen. Because we're releasing our faith with you and uh, it's when the word is mixed with faith that it does its wonder working work. Amen. Amen. And so release your faith. Don't just be a spectator, but be, you have to draw and receive it into your heart. Amen. We're going to minister today on the direction of faith. And my goodness, there's so much to say, right? I mean, you, you just don't reach the bottom of that, that rich, rich flow. And uh, faith can be described in so many, so many terms, but really faith is this, believing that what God says is true and acting like it. That's right. it in a nutshell, yeah. believing what God says is true because it is. Amen. And then act yes, like it. Amen. 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 If we look at someone who has great success in life, mm -hmm. maybe in their business, um, maybe in their marriage, mm -hmm. um, even you can look at sports teams that have great success. Mm -hmm. You can't have great success without one thing in place, and that is a solid foundation. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. And that is being skillful mm -hmm. with foundational things. Yeah. Yeah. Because once, uh, once a foundation is laid, it has to be, if I could say this, inspected to make sure it's still in place. Because things can come along that can shift yes. foundational things in our life if we're not watchful. And so we have to pay attention to make sure that foundational truths are in place and that they're fortified. I remember years ago, I was listening to one preacher and many of you would know him. He's a, 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 he was a leading voice in the body of Christ years ago. Uh, decades ago, and he made a statement. He said, um, he had told his, his builder, he says, I want to add a second and third story onto this building. Mm -hmm. And uh, the builder said, uh, you can't do that. And he said, don't tell me I can't do it. I'm the owner of this building. <laughs> yeah, if I want to add on to this building, I can add on to this building. And the builder said, you may be the owner, but I'm the builder. There. And he said, I only built the foundation based on the blueprints then, and it's only enough to support one story. So you can't throw two stories and three stories on it. He said, we, you know, there's the materials. Uh, certainly an architect could come up with a plan, but it's all determined by the foundation. So notice this, the building could go only as high as the foundation would permit it. Our life will only go as far in some things as our foundation will permit. Faith is a foundational truth. It is such a, a huge part of, of the foundation in the life of the believer. And so the more robust and fortified our faith is, uh, the further we can go in some things. 
Amen. God can take us further. That's and if right, people right. say, well, you know, I just haven't made some advancements, go back and look at your foundation. Come on. That's good. That's good. That's good. Because if that foundation is lacking, the structure will be affected. Amen. If the foundation is lacking, the life will show that. Yes. You know, um, I, um, I, God gave me Sister Amy Simple McPherson's vacation home. It's called Amy's Castle. The, the community name, the city calls it that. I didn't name it that, but that's how it's known in the city. It's, it's very visible, so everyone sees it, you know. And um, before I was able to purchase it, um, a previous owner of it had gone in and replaced the whole foundation under that house. It was a rock and mortar foundation. And they went and they pulled out a section at a time, pulled it out and poured concrete. Wow. Went down, pulled it out, poured concrete. It was a million dollar foundation under that thing. Why? Because that determined the life of what was above that foundation. You can walk into that home and you can see Right now, I'm in the process of renovating it, but um, you can walk into that home and you can see where the foundation was compromised. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because it left its mark. <laughs> you know, yes. there are cracks here and there. The walls were shifting. Other parts, they had to shore mm -hmm. up some lower floor things with it. They had to put some posts in place because the foundation had been compromised. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm just saying this, the foundation is so important. Yes, it is. And we can't just be, you know, with girl eyes, let me just talk, with girl eyes. <laughs> When, when girls go in and look at houses, they just look at the pretty stuff. Oh, they look at the flashy stuff, the stuff on the walls, you know, uh, the ornamental things. But when a builder looks at it, He's, he rarely bypasses all that surface thing because he knows that these surface things won't support the found, won't support the structure of this. He's interested in what's the foundation look like. Well, girl eyes don't look for foundations, you know. Girl eyes look for pretty things. And so I, I realized that with that home, I couldn't just be appreciating that there were some surface things in place. What I valued much and most was that the foundation had been addressed. Yes. And so in our life, there's a foundation and we're building on the word yes. and faith is part of that foundation. Yes. Um, you'll remember over there in Matthew 7, I believe verses 24 through 28, somewhere around in there, it talks about two men, two lives, uh -huh. a wise man, a foolish man. What is it? The Bible talks about that the wise man, he built. Yes. Mm -hmm. He built his home on a rock. Well, that's talking about a life. Yeah. Yeah. God's not just, he, yes, he's showing us architectural truths, <laughs> but <laughs> there he's really talking about a man's life. Yeah. If yeah. you build yeah. on the rock, yes. um, then storm, it, the, the foundation doesn't determine what comes against you. It determines what happens when something Whoa. comes against you. So that home, that life, that wise man built his home, built his life on the rock. Storms came. Right. The foundation right. didn't stop the storms, right. Right. but it affected, it, it upheld the structure. Yes. Yes. So the Bible says that this wise man, he built his house upon a rock because he heard the word and he did it. Oh. Hearing the word is not the foundation. Oh. Doing, Doing the word. That's so good. Yes. is where the foundation is laid. Because there are people who know what the Word says, but it's in the doing. It's in the doing that the foundation is laid. It's not enough to appreciate the Word. Thank God I do appreciate the Word, but that's a beginning place. That's not the ending place. We honor that Word, but we're to honor it to the level that we're doing the Word. Very good. Amen as a lifestyle, not just at moments of crisis. Yes, that word works at a moment of crisis, but we're to implement it every day of our life. It's a lifestyle. And as we do that word, uh, we are fortifying every arena of our life. Every arena, spiritually, mentally, 
physically, materially, mm -hmm. our marriages, our children, our businesses, everything. Mm -hmm. And so um, we have to pay attention to the foundation. It needs to matter to us. We can't just be, right. we can't just be enticed by the pretty stuff yeah. of life. Amen. We have Amen. to go back in reality and say, am I doing mm -hmm. yeah. this word yeah. that upholds all things yeah. yes. when it's built Amen. upon? Amen. 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 The foolish man in Matthew chapter seven, was the one who built on the sand. What's that sand? It shifts. Mm -hmm. It shifts. Yes. It doesn't yes. stay in place yes. under test and trial mm -hmm. and pressure. It shifts. Uh, we need to have a faith that's not going to shift off the word. Be swayed yes. off the word. Yes. Amen. The spirit of faith that will not mm -hmm. be swayed. Yes. And so the, in Matthew 7, it talks about the foolish man was a man who he heard the word, yes. but he wasn't a doer of it. Yes. So it's not what we hear only. It begins with hearing, yes. but it doesn't end with hearing. Yes. Our hearing is to lead us to the doing. Yes. And so these are foundational things that we don't just hear faith. We do faith. Amen. We don't just appreciate faith. We do faith. Amen. Uh, if you look at you look at the teams who make it to the to the highest levels mm -hmm. within their sport, you know whether it's a Super Bowl, whether it's playoffs, where, wherever they they contend, um, it's they're they're all good. Mm -hmm. yeah. To get to those upper levels yeah. of competition, they're all good, yes. right? Mm -hmm. But who determines the winner that day? The one who did the yeah. fundamentals yeah. the best. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's if, if fundamental things are missing, uh, they will not be the, their best that day. Yeah. Fundamental things. And you know, you know this. You've watched enough sports or seen things. Even before the, the game starts, they don't just get out of the car, the players. They don't just get out of the car and walk straight onto the field. Yeah. They don't. What are they doing? They're warming up. Yes. They're tossing the ball. Yeah. They're getting their legs warmed up. Why? These are fundamental, fundamental. foundational yeah. things yeah. that very simple, mm -hmm. very simple, yeah. but they determine who wins. Amen. And so the foundations, the fundamental truths of God's word, they're not hard. Yeah. They're not complicated. Right. They're right. simple, they're simple. Yes. but they still have to be implemented. Yeah. And so anyway, that's, that's, I took a long time to say that. <laughs> Amen. We always have to be checking on the health of our foundation. We have to be inspecting the strength of our faith. The, is our faith flowing unhindered? Because there are things that will clog up the pipeline of faith. And this is the way I describe it. Faith is a pipeline. Yeah. Yes. The pipeline, if I could say this, doesn't heal you. The pipeline does not provide your need. Right. But the pipeline facilitates oh, yeah. the flow of God's power yeah. that heals you. Yeah. The flow of God's power yeah, that right. meets the needs in your life. Yeah. So yeah. the word tells us that we are saved by grace yeah. Through, yeah. Faith. through faith. It's not faith that saves us. It's grace that saves us. But it's faith that gave God permission or gave grace permission to flow into our lives and work that saving power. So faith is a pipeline. It's an access. It's an open door. It's a bridge. It, it, gives, it gives access to the power of God, the ability of God. So if we're going to check our faith, we also have to make sure nothing's clogging up the pipeline of faith. What can clog up the pipeline of faith? Doubt, fear, unbelief, unforgiveness, mm, offense, now. Strife, yes. all these things, they, they're debris that <clears throat> will gather uh -huh. mm -hmm. and will start hindering yes. the flow of God's power into our lives. Yeah. Now, God never withholds power. Right. Why? He's already sent it. He's already given us. What did Jesus say? You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. We already have power. The life of God is in us. We're new creatures in Christ. Right. There, there, there is a flow of power with that life. Amen. God never withholds power, but we can so allow things 
to build up that clog. And so it limits the measure of God's power that can reach our need. Um, <clears throat> in talking about, you know, Sister Amy's castle, it had the or some of the original pipes, plumbing that was in it. It had cast iron. Some of them are big, some of them are small. I've got to go replace the big ones just in case you're asking. <laughs> they replaced, when they renovated, they replaced the small ones. But when I'd sent, because I had a backup in the house on one occasion and I sent my plumber in and he said, Pastor Nancy, he said, the entire pipe was so clogged with debris that he said, the only amount of water you were getting flowed through the, a, a hole the size of the top of a straight pin. It was a tiny opening. There was still power flowing. There was still water flowing, but it was hindered. It was limited. And so that's why we check our foundation of faith. Check our faith pipeline. Because um, although our faith may be in place, is it clogged? Wrong thinking clogs it. You see, all these things I mentioned, unbelief, unforgiveness, uh, rebellion, disobedience, offense, strife, all of these things that are not the flow of God. The, the, the devil offers us so that we will ourselves clog and hinder God's power. God never withholds power. He never withholds power. It's what is going on with the pipeline of our faith. So son, he, that, that uh, plumber, he just took, he, at one point he said, Pastor Nancy, and, uh, now this one was a different pipe. We, there, I had to call out, you know, more than once. And he said, he said, Pastor Nancy, there's roots growing. He said, there's a tree right here by this pipe. It's broken into the pipeline and the pipeline is clogged with roots. <clears throat> well, we don't, if we leave something unattended, it will grow. The wrong thing unattended will grow. Yes. And uh, if we can't, we can't leave offense right. for a period of time right. in our life because it'll grow. It'll grow. Yeah. And those roots will grow and spread and affect the pipeline. So the, uh, the plumber said, I can do one of two things. He said, I can, uh, you know, put a, a device down there that cleans out that. Mm -hmm. He says, I'll do that for you today to open up that flow. But he said, one of two things has to happen. I have to keep coming out to clear that pipeline or you cut down the tree. I said, we cutting down the tree, baby, because I don't want you, I don't want to see you all the time. <laughs> I want to fix the problem. We don't just want to band-aid the problem. We don't just want to address it for the moment. We want to address it for the future. Get rid of offense. Get rid of unbelief. Get rid of fear. Get rid of doubt. All these things that hinder our, our, our faith. And so uh, there again, this goes back to foundational things. Where are foundational things? They're underground. They're in the soil. The soil of the heart. The soil of the heart. Remember, uh, the word talks about the four different kinds of ground. Four different kinds of ground. There were, there were four of them, and only one produced full measure. And that only produced 30 or 60 or 100 fold. The quality of the soil, that determines. These are foundational things, you see. And uh, we need to be bearing fruit every time. We don't want to be like the three kinds of ground that didn't produce. Yes. We want to be the one kind of ground that produces. Yeah, amen. 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 And um, so to do that, we have to address the soil yeah. of the heart. Yeah. 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 And so that's what I talk about when I talk about the foundation. It's not about what business you have or what uh, car you drive or what home you live in. Those are the things above the ground. The soil of the heart produces, it supports all of that yeah. for the life of the believer. Yeah. You see that our business will flourish mm -hmm. as the soil is cared yes. for. Yes. The soil of the heart. Yes. Yes. And I'm not talking about the organ of the heart. Right. 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 
faith, when we talk about your heart, we're talking about the core of your being. That's your spirit, Amen. the core Amen. of your being. That's your spirit where, 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 the, where the life of God uh, resides. Yes. Yeah. The ability of God, everything of God yes. that's, that, that we're full of, yeah. it's in the spirit, man. Your faith is in your spirit. Wow. It's that's not right. in your head. Uh -huh. It's not in your emotions. It's not in your feelings. It's not in your flesh. It's in your spirit. Um, you can't believe God with your mind because there's no faith there. The faith is in your spirit. Um, but we're to renew the mind so that we have thoughts that agree with the faith in our heart instead of argue against the faith in our heart, instead of reasoning against the faith in our heart. So we have to have faith thoughts that come from a renewed mind. We don't have faith thoughts because there's faith in our mind. No, we have faith thoughts because we've renewed our mind. And it agrees with the faith that's in our spirit. Amen. So these are things why I said to address this foundation of faith, right? Because there's so, so much to it. I love hearing anything about faith. I, it never gets old to me. And the reason is, is because faith is my part. Faith is your part. Faith is your part. Power is God's part. But faith is my part. As I said, God never withholds power. Power always meets faith. Always. Always meets faith. What we want to do is express a faith that's unaffected and unhindered yes. by wrong thinking, yeah. Yeah. wrong believing, yes. wrong words, yeah. wrong attitudes, mm -hmm. because all of these things will affect mm -hmm. our faith. Yes. So that's why it's such a joy to teach on faith, yes. because if we will do our faith, mm -hmm. uh, if we will perform our part of faith mm -hmm. more correctly, mm -hmm. more in line with the word, then a greater degree of God's power yes. will be able to reach our need, Amen. flow into our lives. As I said, faith is man's part. Power is God's part. I don't touch the power side. I cannot do that. Amen. Uh, it's his power that does the work. It's not my job to get rid of sickness, pain, symptoms, and disease. It's my job to believe. It's the, it's, the, it's God's job of power. Mm -hmm. That power is what drives out pain, yes. symptoms, yes. sickness, and disease. Yes. But right. when I do my part of believing faith uh, more correctly, mm -hmm. then His power can flow to a greater and greater yes. degree. Right. Amen. Amen. So that's why we're thrilled yes. Yes. with this subject of faith. We must be skillful at our part, not just know what our part is, oh, right, right, but skillful. Right, right, right. You know, you uh, kids, when they start learning, you know, to play sports, maybe basketball, uh, and they say, I'm a, I got picked to be on a team. All right, you're on a team, yeah. but that doesn't mean you're good on your team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't, um, are you a guard or you're a forward? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, then you're not going to be good. <laughs> just because you're on a team, yeah. right? It's not just that, that we have faith. We have to be skillful yeah. with the faith. Yeah. And just, no one is skillful at anything without being trained. Thank yeah. God for the training of the word yes. that helps us. Amen. Amen. I want, um, well, before we go, let's just not go any further Amen. because Amen. We, if we try to go any further, we're not, gonna, we're not going to uh, be able to, oh, we're not going to be able to take all the worms out of that can. Yeah. If we take the lid off that can, we're going to have to leave some worms in there and I don't want to do that today. <laughs> the, the faith of God comes by hearing. Yes. Yes. Faith comes mm -hmm. when we hear the word the capacity for faith comes. Yes. In doing the word, mm -hmm. that's when our faith is built. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's when our faith is fortified. Yeah. We get stronger. It's like, it's like uh, an athlete walking into the gym, mm -hmm. a workout room. Mm -hmm. Being in the room does not build his muscles. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Watching this program doesn't build faith in us. Yeah. We have to do something. Yeah. 
He, that, that, that athlete has to take that weight and he has to work it. He has to work that muscle. All he does is pick it up and he, he gives action to that. But it's the weight in that, in that barbell or whatever he's picking up that, that gives uh, resistance to that, right? Well, even so, the Word of God, it's not enough to be where the Word's taught. Just to be in the room where the Word is taught. It's the doing. It's the doing. It's the doing. It's the doing. So, we're not just hearers, but we're doers. We don't just, we don't just appreciate what the Word says. We live it. We live it. We live it. We live it. Amen. And so we're going to take some time. You don't want to miss it. In the upcoming episodes, we're going to take some time and we're going to talk about uh, a a progression of our faith. Uh, Because really, we should be becoming more skillful with our faith. Every day, we should be becoming more skillful with our faith and our faith should become more and more robust. You know, the Word talks about little faith talks about great faith. It talks about growing faith. Paul said, your faith groweth exceedingly. So we should always be having a faith that's, that's doing more, accomplishing more, taking on more. Faith comes by hearing, but faith does not operate by hearing. Faith is not released by hearing. Faith is, is released through what we say and through how we act, Amen. what we do. So we're going to be talking about that. You don't want to miss it. Amen. Amen. Because there is so much to say and we're, we're, we're giving ourselves uh, our foundation and inspection. Yeah. We're yeah. under inspection, right. not to be critical of it, but to make sure it's fortified. Yes. Amen. And so you, as I said, you don't want to miss the upcoming episodes and uh, we're just so thankful that you've taken time to join us and we invite you to come back next time. Yes. Amen. And until then, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. The timeless truths in this book, Answer It, reveal how to answer every opposition and the steps to take to exit times of testing. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. Come join us for our Dufresne Ministries Miracle Crusade in Tulsa, Oklahoma at The Rock Church, April 16th through the 20th. For more information and to register, visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible.